GOP Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. Good morning to you. Good morning, Ainsley. Great Good to be morning. with you. Good to have you here. You've said that you want him to resign and that he's the worst governor in America. Well, he has earned that title. Governor Cuomo has been enveloped by multiple scandals. First, you have the nursing home scandal and the cover-up, which I believe is a criminal, it's a crime, a federal crime, and an obstruction of justice. You had his most senior aide admit to withholding information from the Department of Justice when they requested information on the numbers of deaths. Uh, and we know, now know that it's over 15,000 vulnerable seniors who died because of Governor Cuomo's uh, nursing home edict forcing positive COVID patients into nursing homes. You also have these sexual harassment scandals. Not one, not two, but five women have come forward and have shared their personal horrific experiences of the sexual abuse, sexual harassment, and sexual grooming. It's not just Republicans who are speaking out for his resignation. It's Democrats as well, Ainsley. And if they really want to take action on behalf of everyday New Yorkers, they need to join Republicans to start impeachment proceedings. So there were 20 Democratic female lawmakers who want to hold off taking action until they can have this investigation move forward. Is that fair? Because the attorney general is doing investigation? Well, first of all, the Democrats had to really be pushed to call for an investigation. I was the first member of Congress, the first senior elected official to call for an investigation December 14th when the first victim, Ms. Boylan, came forward. Uh, we now know there are multiple accounts. And what's really interesting, Brian, is they're all very similar. This is about the governor preying on vulnerable, uh, much less powerful individuals, oftentimes very young, in their 20s, uh, alone in his office office on state government property. So I believe there is um, believable and we should take these women's uh, personal experiences very seriously. And I've called for his resignation. If you look at the governor's own statement, he has called for fellow elected officials for much less to immediately resign. He's not following his own words. No, he is not. All right, Congresswoman, you did not vote for this $1.9 trillion COVID relief package, as it is being described, although there's not that much for COVID in it. But the White House is very proud of one thing regarding it. Here's Jen Psaki yesterday. Listen. Senator Manchin uh, and Senator Sanders and a range of Democrats in between just voted to support a $1.9 trillion package that is the most progressive piece of legislation in history. So uh, I would say we feel pretty good about that. Well, she feels pretty good about it being the most progressive piece of legislation in history. You feel pretty bad about it. Well, she's right. It is the most progressive piece of legislation in history. And how quickly did President Joe Biden forget his inaugural speech focused on unity? There was little to zero outreach to Republicans. And the vast majority of this bill has nothing to do with COVID. Most of the funding actually doesn't even get spent in this year. It gets spent uh, 2022 or after. Let's also keep in mind, Steve, that we have over a trillion dollars of previous bipartisan COVID packages that haven't been spent. We need to focus focus on making sure we have targeted relief to support small businesses, to support schools, uh, and making sure that we're reopening up safely. We don't need to have these pet partisan projects, this wish list that Nancy Pelosi put forward and jammed into a very partisan bill. Who do we elect? Do we elect a moderate uh, or do we elect Bernie Sanders? Bernie Sanders was unelectable. Why are we taking his agenda? Well, um, I have said that President Biden is governing far further to the left and far more progressive than I think even the press and the Republicans predicted over the past election cycle. We've seen with his executive orders, we've seen with this COVID bill, we've seen with the push to the fifteen dollar minimum wage, as well as the yep. amnesty proposals for immigration. How truly far to the left this administration has chosen to be. And I think it's a real opportunity for Republicans to speak directly to the American people that we are the party of common sense. We are the party of economic growth. We are the party that represents the majority of views in this country. We're about to find out in two years. Got a feeling that's going to be a preview of 2022. All right, Congresswoman, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. She said she's not ruling out running for governor. Yeah. She's focusing on re-election.